Okay, so now that you know how to get around the basic layout of 3ds Max, we're actually going to talk about how to navigate and actually create objects so we can start actually learning how to 3D model. So the very first thing we're going to do is make the most fantastic model I've ever seen. We're going to make a box. Yes, I know. Pivotal. Life-changing. <laughs> But the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our perspective window is active. Okay? So just all you have to do is left click in it, make sure it's yellow highlighted. Now we're activated in this window. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to our modifier panel, which is this area again. And the very first tab, kind of looks like this sunburst, is called create. We're going to make sure that's selected. These all these options up here, their own nested menus. So let's make sure that the very first one, create, is selected. The next step is this next kind of nested menu system. The very first tab, geometry, is one we want to make sure is selected. These other tools are things we'll get into in later videos. Some of these we don't really use, but this first tab we'll use a lot. So make sure that geometry is selected. The next thing, I know it's getting convoluted, is make sure that the standard primitives is selected. And primitives is just another word for like an object, a 3D object. So as you can see right here, once we've selected that, we have some boxes, cylinders, and spheres. Other more complex things that we'll use later. Planes we'll use a lot too. But these are where we'll come a lot. You'll come here almost every day as a 3D modeler. This is your bread and butter, okay? So the very thing we're going to do is make a box. So once I click on box, you're going to see a bunch of information kind of pop up down here. Don't worry about it right now. It's, it's a lot of more advanced kind of stuff that we don't need for this right now. So click on box, and you'll notice that some of this stuff popped up down here, like I said, but nothing happened in our scene yet. Really what we've done is we've readied ourselves to make a box. We've now selected it, and so we're going to actually draw a box out into the world. So how we're going to do that is find a place with your cursor here, which now looks different, looks like this crosshair, pick a point out on the grid, and we're going to left click and we're going to hold. Don't let go, okay? And when you hold, you can now drag out this shape. You can make it long and you can make it square. You can do whatever you really want with it at this point. We're kind of making the, the base, the footprint of our box right now. Once you have the size of the footprint of the box you want, we're going to let go of left click. And then we're going to move the mouse up or down. I prefer up. And what we're going to happen is we can actually set the height of the box we want. So once I have it where I like it, which will be right there, I just left click one more time. Once I've done that, you'll see now my mouse is free and I could, we're still primed to make another box. So if I clicked and I dragged out, I'd make another box right now. We don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to kind of make this box it is, but we want to start moving around. We want to modify this box, not make more. So what I can do is I can just right click on my mouse and once I do that, it actually will put me into a mode that makes this object editable and takes me out of the creating mode of a box. Now what it's done is mine, because of my previous settings, has put me into the scaling gizmo. Now I want to get into the move tool first. So I'm going to move up here and there's this option right here. It looks like four arrows and I'm going to select that. And now you will see that the gizmo in my active window has actually changed. Now, if at any time this box becomes unselected, just click on it. Now it's selected again. And you'll see this gizmo. And, and if I highlight and I put my mouse over the arrow tip of this Y and I click and I drag, I can move it on that one axis. 3D models work in three axes. Of course, you know that. You're not dumb. But if you want to move in just one axis, you click over the arrow or make sure that the, the arrow itself is highlighted in yellow. This allows us to move in just one axis. If we want to move in two together, let's say I wanted to move this box down, but I wanted to move it forward some, I can highlight this kind of corner of this kind of box shape that comes out here. And you'll see it highlights this bigger shape in yellow and it makes both Z and X highlighted. Now if I click and drag, it'll move on those two, but it won't let me move in the Y at all. It's now locked away. Now, if I want to do the same for that direction, I could just do that. And again, if I just want to move in just the one axis, I can highlight just that by floating over it. So together, by itself, together, by itself, and then also in here, these together, so it doesn't translate up. 
So that's kind of the basic, basic concept of the moving tool. Now I can come up here again to the top, select the rotate tool, and the same things apply. I want to make sure that my mouse is over top one of these lines. If I'm not hovering it, it, it makes the last one selected yellow, which is my active one. But if I just click on it and rotate, I'm only rotating on that one axis. Okay? I can hit Control Z to undo that. Or I can select this other axis, only rotate on that one. Control Z to undo. Or finally this last one if I just want to pivot it. Okay? Now, if I'm not highlighted over one of these, see how it's changing to yellow? If I'm just grabbing in the middle here, that one's last selected, but I just grab the middle here. It makes the whole sphere kind of gray. This is just kind of doing its own guess at what you're trying to calculate your rotation to. I suggest never really using this unless you're in a very tight situation. Try to just rotate on one axis, rotate on another, rotate on another until you get it to the direction you want. It's much more manageable. Um, this version where it turns gray and you, collect, you don't select on any one specific axis can get really off center really fast, you can get really weird results. So try to avoid that. Always make sure that you're over top one of these lines when you're rotating. Now the last option we have here is the scaling tool. Again, the same kind of principles apply. If I put my cursor right in the middle, you'll notice that it kind of highlights everything. All the X, the Y, and the Z are highlighted, the whole thing glows. If I click and I drag, I will uniformly scale my object up and down. So that means it'll retain its shape, it just gets smaller or bigger. Okay, no, nothing weird is happening. Now, if I hover over one of these kind of these quadrants over here, you'll see that X and Z are just selected. If I click and drag on that, you'll notice it's not scaling like a box anymore. It's kind of doing its own calculation by just scaling those two axes and leaving the Y one alone. Now, I can do that by hovering over one of these quadrants down here, just scaling it in and out, or the same for Z and Y. Again, only respecting two of the axes. And now I control Z to undo that. So again, a lot of the time, you'll probably be scaling the whole object down. Now there's a few cases where you're gonna to need to use this, but when you're first starting out, probably a lot of it will be scaling from the middle. So just remember, if things are acting weird, you can always control Z and remember where your mouse is positioned relative to this gizmo, which is what it's called, um, to make sure you get the right results that you're looking for.